Hello all and welcome to another tutorial. Um, in this case we are we have a bike seat here that I modeled on uh, Rhino. Uh, it, uh, it, it's not thick, it has it's just a surface. We're gonna uh, make it uh, thick on grasshopper and we're gonna apply a Voronoi uh, on it. okay? So uh, I'm gonna open grasshopper and I'm gonna bring it um, to gra I'm gonna bring it to grasshopper with a surface. Okay, so right click, set one surface, and I'm gonna bring it here. And this one, I'm gonna hide it. Uh, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a list of points. Okay, that will go. Uh, Let's make a, like a grid of points, uh, points, and I'm gonna get a. Mm, cross reference. Okay, we have our list of points, and now I'm gonna apply a Voronoi on it. I'm gonna get a slider to control the radius and let's see what that means. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this off. So basically what the Voronoise does, it just creates circles on points that I uh, tell, tell it and it makes a radius so big that they intersect uh, or, or they collide with each other okay in this case we only see this kind of grid because those points are um, organized but if we have a random uh, grid of points then it's when we get uh, the interesting shapes so that's basically how it works so i'm going to get this i'm going to get rid of it and i'm going to turn back on our surface so we can apply uh, the Voronoi on it. So I'm going to go to the perspective view. So what we're going to use is uh, the Voronoi 3D, which does exactly the same, but in this case, they will be spheres uh, on random points. So to create those random points, I'm going to get the uh, populate geometry. Okay, so basically what this does, okay, it just populates that geometry with those points. We can control the count, we can control the um, where they are, okay, with the seed, and we can assign uh, a previous set of points if we have if we wanted to. So I'm gonna get a slider to control the count. Let's go from 50 to maybe 200. Okay, and we can control that, yeah, those points. So the points, um, if, I, if I connect them here, okay, the program uh, automatically creates a box or a cell that um, it's lim um, making uh, the boundaries of, the, of that seat, okay? So that, there is a, a coincidence, okay? an exact coincidence of the edges of that seat with this box that uh, the program is predefining. So what I want, those uh, edges, as they are exactly on the same spot as, the, as those cells of the Voronoi, uh, they might give me some trouble. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create my own bounding box. And I'm going to scale it to make it a little bit bigger than uh, the already uh, the existing seat. So I'm gonna get a bounding box for this. Okay, I'm gonna turn this off. And I'm gonna turn this off as well. And this bounding box, I'm gonna make it slightly bigger. So I'm gonna get the center of it, put the volume uh, component 
okay and now I'm gonna scale it so the geometry I want to scale is this one and the center of that scale is the centroid I'm gonna turn this off and so I need to go above, above one so I'm gonna make a slider of 1.1 okay that it's slightly bigger than the seat and then that's what i'm going to connect on the box of the voronoi so it won't create it uh, by default okay it will use the geometry i'm giving it to it okay the next thing that we have to do is see where uh, they are colliding that seat with those cells where is uh, an intersection so i'm going to get the uh, brep, brep component and I'm gonna see where they are intersecting each other okay so if I turn this off that's where they are intersecting each other okay uh, if we change that seed we will change the order and if we change this value here okay we'll make them smaller okay uh, once we have this uh, what we want to do is scale those uh, cells to make them I'm gonna make holes out of them so uh, we need to scale each of them uh, from each of their their center and uh, then we're going to use those scaled curves to trim the, sur the surface and, and make holes. So uh, to do that, we are going to use the scale component, the same one that we use for the uh, bounding box. And the other thing that we are going to use is to find the center of each of them is going to be the area. No, actually we're going to use the average because the area might give us some trouble as this is not a flat surface. Okay, so we're going to use the average. So what we're going to do is scale each of those points or those vert vertices of each of those cells um, and, and then create a new polyline. Okay, so we're going to get the polyline component as well. okay and the other thing that we are going to need is to find those points which is going to be the discontinuity so this uh, component what it does it's it tells us where there is a continuity depending on the level of that curve if it's a polyline it will just give us the vertices or we can go to a tangency or a curvature but we're not, now we're going to keep it as it is so if we connect those curves there we can see that it shows us where those each each corner of each uh, cell is. So we, that those are the points that we are going to scale. So if I take this and plug it into the geometry without putting, I'm going to go through here and then here. Then they are going to be scale. I'm going to start turning things off. Okay, I'm gonna turn this off as well, which is the center of each of them, and then I'm gonna we're gonna change the factor. Now it's 0 0.5. I'm gonna create a slider that goes from 0 0.20 to one, for instance. And that way we can control the size of those holes. Okay. Uh, if you can you can see that this is gonna give this is giving us a tree okay I'm gonna connect this to the polyline and I'm gonna turn this off and those polylines we need to close them so here I'm gonna right click and then invert that boolean okay so there are our lines, they seem uh, pretty good. I'm gonna turn this off. 
and now I'm going to try to trim it. So to trim it, I'm going to use the surface split. And the curves that I'm going to use are this. I'm actually going to flatten this. And the surface that I'm going to trim is the first, is the main surface of the seat. Okay, I'm going to turn this off. And then I'm going to extract the biggest surface there is, which for that I'm going to need uh, to measure the area of each of those surfaces. And if you put uh, your mouse on it, you can see it's the first one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a list item. And I'm just going to connect it there. And if we turn this surface off. OK. We have that uh, that shape. OK. Um, OK. Uh, the other thing that we could do, uh, it's make it a um, Let's thicken it for uh, to thicken to thicken it. I'm gonna use a plugin that it's called Weaverbird, okay, which is pretty good for meshes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it a mesh. <clears throat> and then on Weaverbird we have a component that help us thicken a mesh. And for that, the distance is pretty fine as five. I'm going to use a slider from one to five with a few decimals. OK, and we could smooth it out with another component uh, of uh, the Weaver Bird, which is this one. Okay, now you can see it's a little bit uh, softer. And if you see the output, okay, it's a proper mesh. Okay, so we could take this and 3D print it. Okay, I hope you understood everything and I'll see you next time.